All right, welcome to the fourth episode of the 2021 MLB Draft Team Previews. We're going to roll out one of these every single day during the week leading up to the 2021 MLB Draft in hopes of preparing you for what your team might do. But today we have one of the more interesting teams in the draft, one of the more interesting general managers in any draft, Mike Elias, Mike Snyder, the Baltimore Orioles. Jeff, Baltimore... (laughs) They're on the come up, man. They have been drafting like fiends of late. They went with Heston Kerstad in 2020, a, a, arguably a little bit of a divisive pick, but really loaded up over the final four rounds. Adley Rutschman, of course, in 2019, who he went 1-1, but he was almost everyone's favorite pick. Uh, I think you and I can agree. We absolutely love what Adley brings to the table moving forward. And then Grayson Rodriguez, Gunnar Henderson. I mean, they've really hit it out of the park here over the last three or four years in the draft. I want to throw it over to you. Where do you see the Baltimore Orioles going this year? And who do you think makes sense for, uh, for, for Mike Elias? Yeah. And I think if you look at like Brett Sealek, who um, I believe is their director of amateur scouting or high up there, um, they've taken the top college player that's been available there the last few years um, you know, we got to really just look at the last two drafts. I think Adley obviously was a slam dunk. They like to get as much talent as they can for their dollar pool. It's exactly what they did last year. You know, Kerstad, whatever you want to say about the pick, I still like the pick. I still think the player is really good. There might be a chance now that we're seeing some torque struggles that maybe Kerstad could be exactly what torque is. It wouldn't totally shock me. I know it's going <laughs> to probably blow some guys' uh, hats off their heads, but um, you know, I think they're willing to take some chances and do some things that maybe aren't in line with consensus, aren't in line with, you know, what we consider to be chalk here in the public space. Uh, they'll take some chances. And I think for that reason, I think they're going to go with a prep player in this draft. You know, let's say whatever the prep shortstop is that's available, whether it's Lawler, whether it's House, whether it's Mayor. But I think ultimately those guys are going to probably be gone. We're going to be talking about maybe Khalil Watson here. And I think there's even some thought between the two of us, even that if Watson was there and Jordan Lawler was there, they might still go with Watson. I, you know, I know that they've been somewhat connected to Watson early on in the process. It also wouldn't shock me if they go with a college arm. Maybe they still go the college route. They go with another high-performing college superstar that's played in big games. Is there any pitcher in particular, Joe, that you could think of (laughs) that kind of fits that mold? Maybe somebody that we know, famous college player, big games, anyone? Right in the top five, six, seven. Yeah, I mean, there's a guy. There's a guy that some people might have heard of. Kamar Rocker. Kamar Rocker. I mean, this guy guy we've been talking about going 1-1 for two years after absolutely dismantling Duke as a true freshman in 2019. I think if you tell Baltimore Orioles fans in February that you're going to be landing Kamar Rocker with pick five, that's pretty enticing. Here's my thing. So Mike Elias, he has he, he's famous for going under slot. Heston Kerstad, uh, Carlos Correa. He's gone different routes to save money. As you can see, he's sli- uh, signed under slot the last three years in the first round. There's a difference between the fifth pick and the sixth pick of $440,000 for bonus pool money. If you call up Kamar Rocker's representation and you say, we'd like to take you here, but we'd like you to save us $200,000. We'd like you to sign $200,000 under slot. I think you have to seriously consider that. And if you're the Baltimore Orioles and you're this close, you're maybe a year and a half or two years away from a competitive window opening up. Kamar Rocker is going to be a big leaguer by 2023. And I think you and I would both agree. I don't know the the role or the ceiling, but Mm. putting Kamar Rocker in that big league rotation right now for 2023 is awfully appealing. But I think I'm with you. I think they are going to go with a prep shortstop. And it's a farm system that could certainly use it. They've got a ton of high upside right now. And I think a guy like Khalil Watson certainly fits the bill. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, it would be exciting whether they go with Watson or whether they go with Rocker, especially adding him in and his stuff, um, the player development team and, you know, sort of mentality that they've really built over the last couple of years here under Elias. They've allowed a lot of players to get better. Grayson Rodriguez, already a really talented arm. D.L. Hall, already a really talented arm. 
they've made both those guys better. Kyle Brandish is another name that I know we were discussing yeah. before the show. Came into the organization. They've allowed him to get a lot better. He's throwing a really high uh, efficiency fastball, high EV, IVB, EVB, IVB fastball with an absolute hammer curveball, right? You know, talk about tunneling, as you had sort of uh, alluded to off, off air. But they're an organization that can take a guy like Kumar and make him even better. Guy that needs to add that third pitch, maybe refine the cutter a little bit more, refine the change up a little bit more, improve the shape of the fastball. They're an organization that could do that and could actually make Kumar Rocker even better. Um, and I think, you know, Watson kind of fits the bill. They need some up the middle infield talent to go along with Gunnar Hen Henderson, who's been an absolute revelation this year. But I think he's more of a third baseman long term. They need that sort of up the middle shortstop everyday guy. I think they could get that in Watson. I think that's what the pick is here, right, Joe? If we're going to say prospects lives pick, I think it's going to be Khalil Watson. But uh, wouldn't shock me it's a walker either. I think it's Khalil Watson, prettiest swing in the draft. But hey, if you're a Baltimore Orioles fan, Grayson Rodriguez, John Means, DL Hall, Kamar Rocker, as a backup plan, pretty exciting. We'll catch you on the next one.